and welcome back for day two of qualifiers. We are here with Bracket D, starting with uh, game one, On Point Gaming versus ADP Gaming. Sorry, uh, I will be one of your ho or your hosts today, uh, Designator. Alongside with me here is. Uh, you got Ponox here on the uh, duo with Desaninator. Uh, so we're going to get into champ select here right now. A's with the Leona band coming out for the blue side and a Skarner band coming out for ADP Gaming. Uh, Tristana coming out for on point just to round out that bot lane. Uh, and we're going to go here with purple side ban. So, so far, um, Skarner, pretty standard ban. Uh, very strong in the jungle, very strong at objective control. He's got a lot, uh, lot going for him there. So, uh, Elise coming coming out for uh, the purple side. Uh, just very strong in general. Uh, I mean, she's even after some nerfs here. Rune Glaive is still very good on her, uh, I, as well as Cinder Hulk to give her some tankiness to be able to be a frontliner. Uh, just a lot of. Uh, Utility with Elise getting that cocoon stun off and uh, Olaf gonna be coming off to ban uh, for the top lane Yeah, I mean we got Olaf coming out. We saw a pretty big game on Olaf yesterday Unfortunately wasn't a victory. However, we do have the Rex side ban coming out from ADP First pick going out a lot of regular bans here the jungle kind of getting cleared out here by ADP taking out Skarner at least and Rek'Sai we're gonna have to see what's gonna be picked up I know Echo Gragas still stronger picks Evelyn still very good in the jungle not exactly sure what they're gonna pick here I have to see there's still a lot of OPs open we did see a very strong performance on champions like Hecarim uh, strong gangplank yesterday Garen is still available a lot of these OPs open but on point being very smart not Hovering over anything, doesn't want to give anything away. Probably just going to wait here until the last second and lock in. Yeah, so I mean, with the jungle, I mean, they're probably going to be very contested right off the hop here. Uh, might see a uh, jungle ban coming out here, or a pick, sorry, in the next couple seconds as blue team's really winding that timer down, really uh, discussing all their options. As it looks like the Brom's going to be locked in to uh, pick up that support role. Uh, pretty good overall. I mean, the Leona's gone, so. Braum is going to be a very fr big frontliner, does a lot of uh, damage absorption as well as a lot of CC, just like Leona. So he's going to be able to have the same kind of pressure in lane. So they get rid of Le Leona to counter that, and they just have the Braum come in there. We're going to have to see here if Leona, or sorry, Sivir is picked up. Very popular pick yesterday. Very easy. Four teams to run that comp. A lot of utility coming out. I'm very curious. I really want to see someone pull out the Draven personally. Not sure if we'll find one today. I hear there is a Draven main somewhere out there. Hopefully we'll find him somewhere here. But a lot of these teams taking a lot of time for their bans. I guess it is their first game against in the in the bracket anyways. Don't really know what the other guys play. Just maybe looking at their solo queue, taking a look, seeing what they used to play. Team games very much different. They do bring out the Jinx Nautilus. Nautilus, very much a flex pick. Could go support, could go top. Jinx, a very smart choice, very late game scaling, a lot of AoE damage. We'll have to see where if they're actually going to put that Nautilus in the top lane or maybe bring it to the bottom lane. If they bring that Nautilus to the bot lane, I mean, he's going to have a lot of appeal for that Jinx, who's very low mobility, so he's going to be able to keep that Braum off of uh, the Jinx, keep those stacks from going on from Braum's passive. So all over, if that would go to the bot lane, that'd be a pretty good pickup. It's going to have a lot of CC, a lot of appeal, um, as well as just going to have a lot of follow-up for any engages that are going to go on in the bot lane. Um, we're going to have to see how they decide to round out that comp, but so far it's looking pretty solid. It's got some front line, got some uh, good back line there. Oh, and the Teemo hover a man after my own heart here <laughs> uh i don't think that one's gonna come through more probably of a just a troll pick here but uh yeah so we're gonna go for a kogma and a lulu it looks like we might see another protect the ad carry comp coming out for i think it'd be our third game so far casting very strong as long as i if they do run this comp i want to see them run a high damage top laner because a lot of the times we've seen these teams run the two damage comp with the protect the AD carry. And as it scales late game, they just don't have the damage to win those team fights. I think Jinx will be putting out, scales fairly well, does have a lot of AoE damage. The Orianna pick coming out. Tom Kench, that will be a top lane Nautilus, I assume. Or, or a top lane Tom Kench. You know what? I guess we can't really nail anything down. It's Both of them are still a flex pick. 
Either or, we won't know where they're going until the end of Champs Lock. It seems like a lot of these teams are really going towards the uh, protect the carry comps uh, so far in the tournament. I mean, we see a lot of Lulu mids coming out in this. Oriana, I mean, that's still fixed uh, into that kind of comp there. Having a lot of shields, having a lot of uh, mobility boost uh, with the W, as well as just a lot of uh, team fight potential with the ultimate. So still very much fits into the uh, protect the carry comp as a nocturne maokai come out for on point gaming uh first nocturne of the tournament so i gotta say i'm pretty excited not necessarily a meta pick but uh if he goes devour i mean he's gonna be able to just blow up that jinx pretty quick if he's able to get into that back line yeah i really hope if they do run that nocturne it well now that they are they go straight damage it's like i was saying i want them to be able to that damage and we have the Narlock in. So I think we were wrong the whole time. We Nautilus have a jungle. Nautilus jungle coming out. I do like the team comp coming out from ADP Gaming. The, they have a lot of CC, but balanced with a lot of damage. That Jinx has a big front line with Tom, Nautilus, Nar. We've got Maokai, Nocturne. Both teams, a lot of potential. I'm very skeptical with the Protect the Ada Carry comp only because I'm not sure they will have the damage in that game even though Kog'Maw scales incredibly well with that Lulu. We'll have to see. You never know what goes on in these games. Jinx, she puts out just as much damage as Kog'Maw in the late game. So, I mean, as far as scaling goes, they're going to be able to keep up. But the mid laners, that's going to be where the real uh, discrepancy is going to be coming in. I mean... Orion is going to do a lot more damage than Lulu late game. Lulu is there more for the utility than anything else. But depending how this uh, the Oriana builds, I mean, she could go for the tier. She could go uh, potentially for just a hard AP build to do a lot of damage. So we're going to have to see how that one rounds out. But uh, yeah, we're going to be taking a short break here. Uh, so stick around. We'll be right back with uh, game one of the uh, day two qualifying matches.
All right, welcome back, guys. We are in game. We'll have to see if On Point has that late game scaling with the Protect the AD Carry Comp to take down ADP. It should be interesting. I'm very curious if we're going to have another double jungle early tower dive or if these teams are just going to go with a standard level one play. Yeah, it's really interesting to see how these teams kind of uh, adapt uh, in the early game here, going with some, uh, you know, high level competitive style uh, level ones with the, you know, the five man roams, the double jungles, stuff like that. So it's definitely, it's interesting to see how they kind of take what they see in pro gaming uh, and kind of adapt that into their own five, five v five play style. So yeah, it's it's cool to see the double jungles and all the non-conventional starts. Like yesterday, we even seen a lane swap, which isn't something you see every day. Uh, so and the team actually pulled it off. So it, props to them taking something that it's very hard to practice with, and because uh, not a lot of teams you know go with it. Uh, so um, it's interesting to see how these level ones do pan out. Yeah, on point, getting in some deep words here, making sure they know if he's gonna start in the top side jungle. Didn't really get a. I don't think they really got a word up there where Nar is. It'll be interesting to see if he tries to start that camp early. Not much of a Nar player myself. Not sure if he can take those Krugs or not. But they do get the deep wards in. Walk away. Red team does have a ward on their own red, so they will know that they left. Not hanging around on that red buff. Tom Kench sneaking in there. Egg putting down a ward for his team. Looks like everyone's just going to go back to and start, and it actually looks like they might do the double jungle on On Point Gaming here with the Maokai helping with the Nocturne. Yeah, so Nar, he's not really the one to take a camp by himself. I mean, he doesn't have the uh, the prepped saplings like Maokai does, or he can't, you know, die and then come back like Scion can. So he's probably just going to start the, the lane completely normal, just farm up and maybe try and push it back into Maokai's tower as Maokai's going to help nocturne here do a double jungle so they actually give the the first camp to the maokai to give him some experience here so he does hit level two as he gets the full experience and they're actually gonna uh double tank this uh so instead of one you know taking more damage than the other and the maokai just tp'ing up they're actually gonna give a lot of this to uh the damage to the nocturne which is a little unusual so they might go oh they pulled a lane swap here uh, very interesting level one coming out of this first game today. Yeah, and the Jinx, Tom Kench actually starting Gromp. Nautilus giving it to them. I think he might have smited it and then let them finish it. And they end up lane swapping. So that lane advantage going to still be hard for the Maokai with them having that early experience buff. But they're looking just to let the Kog'Maw farm it out in more of a safe environment. Not really sure if he would be that safe with the Tom Kench and the Jinx. But that Jinx is a very good early game tower pusher and... Looks like Maokai's still sticking with Nocturne there. We're going to see if Gamer Dakota and Anglosity can actually take down that turret early or not. It's going to be interesting to see how this goes. So it looks like Nocturne and Maokai are both making their way to the top lane. So they might actually go for an early dive onto this Gnar. Uh, as the wave is being pushed in there, They had Gnar had ward coverage though. So he's actually just going to hop out of there. Looks like uh, On Point Gaming is just going to go for a fast push on this tower. Oh, actually, Maokai TPing to the bot lane just to deprive uh, Jinx and Tom Kench of that tower. So, so far, pretty even. Uh, Nar being forced out of the lane. Oriana did roam up, though, so she's actually going to lose a bit of pressure in that lane herself. So, uh, yeah, very interesting start to this uh, early game. A lot of just sporadic movements here. They're trying to take objectives but also keep their own up. Still putting a lot of pressure on this turret. Nar is now in the mid lane trying to help out. I think they might have just given up and are going to try and give up that top turret. Not sure that's exactly what they want to do. Giving that Kog'Maw all that free farm as Nocturne should be able to swing up there. It's going to go B instead. Bad call, but Nar still just kind of looking around. We'll have to see if he's going to make his way down bot. We might see a four-man dive. But Lulu and Braum, oh, Braum at least, heading down there. Might not be successful. Nautilus is in place, though. We'll have to see. Nar just about there, but Braum should spot him out. Oh, doesn't go through the bush there. Nar down here. They do spot out the four-man gank here, and it looks like they will just back off. And just Kog'Maw still just farming away. 
it's kind of just some awkward map movements coming in from each of the teams here. It's just uh, the ideas are all there. I mean, they want to get the the pressure advantage in the lane, get the uh, numbers advantage, and then you know maybe potentially get a dive out there. But it just looks like uh, they're kind of being matched at that point. So uh, whether it's the vision control with the NAR in the top lane spotting it out and just getting out safely, or just a uh, Braum randomly being there in time, he kind of they spotted that out. Um, and yeah, they were just able to match it, so not a lot coming out for either team. Uh, yeah, just kind of some weird map movements. Not one team gaining an advantage over the other quite yet, as gold is still pretty even. Uh, but Kogma has been getting that free lane in top, so he's going to be getting quite an XP lead um, in terms of uh, just, you know, the solo lane experience. Yeah, trying to get him to that early level 6, kind of get his power spike. Not that his ulti as AD does as much damage, but it is still nice to have. Mid lane, Lulu starting to pull away from that Orianna. Almost up, well, is up, sorry, 15 CS. We'll have to see if she can keep pushing that advantage. Only about a 200 gold difference there. But it looks like ADPs and on point both just kind of feeling each other out. No one really ready to make any risky moves. We do see the Jinx land the Flame Chopper, however, taking a lot of turret damage. Getting a lot of poke. Not sure it was a worthy trade. Maokai might be able to just heal up using his passive there underneath the turret, but Tom Kench is very good at doing tower dives and keeping his AD carry secure, so we'll have to see. He does play it safe and goes back to base. So in the mid lane matchup here at least, uh, we see some discrepancy here. Lulu getting quite ahead, but it looks like Braum is going deep into the uh, into ADP's jungle as he's just putting down some deep wards, getting it on that red buff, and he's making his way back up to Kog'Maw. But again, uh, back in the mid lane, Orion is very oom, so she, she's not going to be able to zone out this Lulu as Lulu is just putting down a lot of pressure, getting a lot of harass in here, and uh, all over just taking control of this lane so far until the Orion is going to have a chance to back and get some items. Yeah, ADP do pick up the first turret of the game down there, but as Maokai had to go B. Didn't have his teleport available, and they do take it down. It looks like on point might try and return with another turret in the top lane here. Not sure if Nar is by himself. No one else with TP. No one's going to be able to help him. No one is level 6. Oh, sorry. Nocturne is level 6. They Or is he level 4? My apologies. Level 4. They might not be able to dive. Going to give up a free dragon, however. We'll have to see. They are taking it. Lulu going back. On point, have no idea this dragon is going on. It might go over for free, but they might give up a turret at the same time. It's not exactly worth to say the first dragon is for a tower. Um, I mean, it's just one dragon. It's not going to be a huge advantage until they'll start stacking up. But, I mean, great vision control there. Just, you know, not, or I guess lack of vision control. Uh... ADP recognizing that nobody was bought and uh, really taking that dragon early uh, to, you know, it really accelerate that five dragons that they could potentially be getting from that. Uh, so far, Lulu going back, getting the uh, Fiendish Codex as well as uh, just some mana regen. So it looks like she's going to be going towards the Morellos. Um, but Orianna going with the uh, Chalice first. Uh, but Jinx going with the BF right away. So Kogma has yet to back. Uh, we're going to have to see. He might uh, be going just for, you know, a very large amount of items right on his first back here. Uh, but he's still pretty ahead in terms of gold and experience. He does... Probably going to still go for that Triforce. Decides not to go B. Might push another wave. I'm very curious to see if Orianna or Tom Kench is going to pick up uh, the new Zeke's Harbinger item. If Orianna would take it for defensive, I think it would be a little silly. She's not as much of a supportive type. She does a lot more damage. She does have the utility in her kit, but I don't know if she'd utilize it as much. I mean... Bra Tom Kench could definitely build it and attach it to Orianna or Jinx. It would be more effective on Jinx once she has Static Shiv or Phantom Dancer. Put him at her, her at about a solid 90% crit rate. And with those rockets, it does a lot of damage throughout the entire team. Lulu just really pulling ahead in the CS here. 70 to 54 in the mid lane. Just pushing all those advantages, getting a lot of harass and zoning this Orianna out of the lane. Uh, in the jungle though, so... Nocturne is going to be going for that uh, warrior build first, so he's not going to be going for the Devourer. Uh, still going to be able to do a lot of damage in the back line, but Nautilus, he's going to be going for more of the tanky build, but get focusing on that vision as he picks up the Sweeper, picks up the Sight Stone. So uh, ADP, they're going to be having the double Sight Stone, so that seems like a very high priority for them. 
as uh, they're going to be getting into this later game, hoping to really focus on the objective control, focus on the dragons, as it looks like some uh, little bit of wrestle down here in the bot lane as uh, they are just going to back off here. Not too much action as Nocturne is making his way down there. Yeah, I hope that uh, ADP Gaming gets a lot more deep wards with the enemy Nocturne jungle. They do spot him out with a one ward. But with that Paranoia ultimate, you have to be very careful. He can pop away from a range. So it is very important when you're going to push up that far as a bot lane. You do have the vision. Maokai flashing the Nautilus hook there. Good flash. It is down. Maokai taking your champion is going to take a little more than a couple of hits to take him down. So... Flash not being the biggest, but does take away a little bit of engage away from on point gaming. Polar Bear, very farmed up on this Kogma. Hasn't really had much to deal with. No one's really challenged him to stop him from farming. He's basically just free farmed all game. And once he hits that Triforce, he's going to be doing a lot of damage with that Lulu, giving him the whimsy to speed him up. So something to note here is Nar is only sitting on the double Doran's blade, and he's quite ahead of Maokai. Uh, but deciding not to back, just you know, build up the gold. Uh, gonna go back for a big item, get a big spike right away. But they find Nocturne in his blue buff. But uh, I mean, a couple more members here are gonna meet them as there is an engage coming on. The paranoia comes out. Orion is there to meet them. Oriana Alt comes out, Tom Kench coming in though, first blood for Maokai as the fight continues on, Maokai Alt coming out, but I don't know if he's going to be able to get out of this, he's putting on the damage, no one else is going for him, Lulu going to get the rocket, she dies, they're chasing onto the Maokai, not sure if they're going to be able to get him as he's just too tanky thus far with the Glacial Shroud, Sapling going to come out, slow the fight, and just, uh, it's going to end there, so, so far a 2 for 1 in the favor of ADP Gaming. Unfortunately there, for On Point Gaming, Braum not having his ulti available, which provides a lot of CC, and the rest of ADP Gaming collapsing on that pick there, and with their ultimates, definitely capitalizing. Great shockwave by, there by the Orianna, uh, the Lulu trying to get away, but Jinx picking it up with the Super Mega Death Rocket there, and this actually might turn into this free mid turret, really opening up this map for ADP Gaming, evening the game there in gold, and now they should be able to swing down, get ready for Dragon, and uh, look for another fight. Oh, we do see here, Braum does go in, they might be able to take down the tower, but for what cost, Braum does back away as Dax trying to get out, stay healthy for the next fight, Walrus Thunder not looking to start any fights, and they just give up the turret. Yeah, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of fights this game. Just uh, in terms of looking at the comps, there's a lot of global threats here. I mean, Nocturne's going to be coming out with the Paranoia. Uh, Maokai TP coming in to join lots of the fights. But on the other side, you also got the Tom Kench alt. He's able to bring an ally with him. You got the Nar TP. So, I mean, no matter where they're going to find the engages, there's going to be fights all over the map. And uh, it's going to be pretty explosive ones at that, just with the amount of engage that both teams have with the uh, Nautilus hook, with the Nar alt. Um, and then on the other side, you got the Maokai, you got uh, Nocturne there. So just a lot of uh, a lot of potential here with both of the team's comps. Yeah, I do really like that they're swinging to try and grab this turret before Dragon give themselves a little more room to work with. So the uh, ADP Gaming can't just simply run away to their turret if they decide to fight. Nar does have TP available, so he will continue split pushing top there. No one going B on on point. No, oh, sorry, Maokai does go B. TP is also available. We'll have to see. This. Just putting down wards, getting buffs, getting prepped here. Nautilus about to go B. Might not be the wisest choice. We'll have to see if On Point recognizes that and can quickly grab the dragon while he's gone. So, yeah, Kog'Maw going with that, uh, the Triforce build, picks up the Phage first, and he goes with an Amtome, so he's working towards that Sheen. Not quite hitting a huge spike yet, but uh, he's going to be working his way up there. Uh... Nocturne's the first jungler to finish his jungle item, but I mean, the uh, the Nautilus did finish that Sight Stone first, so that's going to put him a little bit behind in terms of the items. Uh, TP is coming in for Nar. Wow, he's got his Nar bar charts. He's going in with the ult, but the Braum ult to disengage. It's going to be clean there. Nautilus gets the drag. Three-man stun from the Nar. Going to clean up. Shockwave coming in on the Kog'Maw, but Lulu ult going to be countering that. Maokai TP's in. Get the stun off from the Tom Kench ult. Just kidding. He's going to be going. The rocket comes out there. Lots of damage coming in from the Kogma as he's going to go down, though. Lulu not going to be able to keep going as the they finish it off with a clean ace. Well, not quite clean, but uh, wow, what a fight there.
Yeah, great fight there by ADP Gaming. I'm actually surprised the Melkai didn't try and interrupt that TP. Nar hit his full rage bar, immediately teleported in, came in with the three man Nar ult, Nocturne trying to finish the dragon. His team leaves him behind. They kill him as well as pick up the dragon. And that was just great for ADP Gaming, getting five kills and dragon at plus this turret that puts them up a solid 3,000 gold. And the Jinx resets able to just chase him down. And this is what I was telling you. I'm very fearful for On Point Gaming rushing this Protect the AD Carry comp again with only one damage source. They take out the Nocturne before he's relevant, leaving Kog'Maw by himself, which he did a lot of work in there. But you have Jinx coming in, the CC and damage coming in from the Gnar. It's just so overwhelming. I'm not sure that that comp is going to outscale the Jinx. They got a lot of point and click onto this Kog'Maw. I mean, you got the, the Nautilus ult, you have the Orianna Shockwave, you got the Gnar ult. That's going to be able to really dive in the back there, lock him up, get him down, and just keep him around. Not able to really peel anything off of that. Uh, so it's going to be a hard time for this Kog'Maw, so they're going to have to do a lot of work. This comp, though, it's really working out for ADP Gaming. Uh, with the amount of engage that they do have. They're able to really have some extended fights with a good front line with the Tom Kench, the Nautilus, the Gnar. Uh, but, I mean, Gnar is building some damage, so it's not just a single threat comp, kind of like the way that uh, it, the uh, on-point gaming is constructed around this Kog'Maw. They have a lot more threats than just the Jinx, so really good on them to really build this well-rounded team. Yeah, a lot of damage and a very tanky front line tons of CC getting to that Jinx is going to be a lot harder than getting to that Kog'Maw we're just going to have to see how it scales so far ADP Gaming doing very well at pushing that gold lead they're going to try and protect this turret here very scary I'm quite certain there might be a fight breakout here which wouldn't be favorable I feel for on point gaming trying to dive a turret well behind but they need to find those little objectives Nar not having Nar ultimate as he it does drop out of Mega Nar doesn't have TP available, so he is going to have to come down to his team. Jinx and Kog'Maw, Jinx only having about a 3,000 gold advantage, pretty close for most, except the Gnar up 1,400 gold in that top lane, and it's starting to show. Has that Black Cleaver finished, putting out a decent amount of damage, but getting a lot of tanky stats just from being Mega Gnar. Have a, bit, a little bit of that Wombo combo with the Gnar Ultimate Orianna. Played it very well last team fight, and they're just going to keep looking for that and cleaning up kills with the Super Mega Death Rocket. Something to look at here is the amount of vision that ADP is focusing on. Every single person has done something with their trinket. They have two upgraded yellow trinkets, they have two sweepers, and they have a blue trinket, as well as double sightstone, and almost every single person has a pink ward in their inventory. That is some huge priority on the vision for them, as uh, you can see that they just have a lot of deep wards into uh, On Point Gaming's jungle, especially around that blue buff area, and they did have quite a bit around the dragon, but they have expired, but it's just amazing to see a team focus that hard on the vision. Yeah, and it's very important, especially with Nocturne, because you can alt from almost anywhere on that side of the map. They have these deep wards allowing them to push and put a lot of pressure on these lanes, slowly taking turrets as they swing Jinx, Jinx top there. They have two minutes till Dragon, easily enough time to take a couple of turrets, push their advantage, get some gold going, and head for that third Dragon. I wouldn't be surprised if they get a couple of kills here and take dra and take the Baron. You have Jinx already finished her Infinity Edge. Kog'Maw just finishing his Triforce. But once she gets the Static Shift, she'll be doing a lot of damage. Shockwave does come out. They do put down a lot of damage onto the Maokai. And it looks like he's going to have to go B. The Meg Super Mega Death Rocket does go out, but is blocked there by the team. Helping her brother out. Keeping him alive. Kog'Maw trying to put some poke down. But they might actually pick up two turrets here in this push. And ADP Gaming just doing very well in making these picks. We're going to have to see the Nautilus all does go out onto the Nocturne. He is forced to flash. Braum Ultimate used. Unbreakable comes out, blocking a lot of the poke damage being put out. Meganar is used, but no one is near to make it effective. It looks like ADP will just back away off this engagement. Yeah, is a good way to chunk them all out as this uh, Dragon is coming up, as the Baron is coming up. 
they are going to choose to back. They'll get their items, and they're really going to be prepping for that next fight, making sure that they all hit their proper spikes. Uh, we're going to see Oriana be going for some penetration with the boots, and Jinx is going to be working towards that uh, the zeal there, so she's going to be doing some more crit, as well as just the attack speed to put out some more DPS for the team. But it looks like they're going to be pinging out the bottom lane, or on point gaming is at least, just to try and push that out, get some more pressure on the bottom side of the map, so they can hopefully contest that dragon just uh not a lot of vision around there yet so far just for a uh on point gaming they got a pink ward around there and that blue one but it looks like uh adp is making their way down there as a as a group uh which i mean on point is kind of lacking maokai's top lane he does have the tp up but i mean he's got to be very responsive in this fight if they're going to hope to come back in this one just with the amount of cc that they're going to have towards that kogma maokai's got to be there right away to peel off those uh cc threats diving into that back line we do have nar here about to turn mega nar he does slow the lulu not going in as he does get hit by the winter's bite has a couple stacks of the concussive blow but this should be enough to get a substantial vision around dragon and be ready for this next fight that comes out they are going to secure the scuttle crab and it looks like on point might just try and shove down mid lane and pick up the turret here run the threat of losing a turret but they have to be very careful as that is a very tanky team heading their way the oriana ball does go on to flame fire he does land the hook they start seeing down the maokai he is being crushed nar with no nar bar though the lulu ulti used oriana ult catches three people a lot of damage coming down from the jinx another kill on her spider phenom the may super mega death rocket catches onto one person slowed by the boomerang are they going to be able to catch dax they're slowly getting there nar jumps over and picks up the triple kill for nar he's still chasing down walrus sunder he will get the slow the nautilus assault reused but not completed and that is an ace for ADP gaming and they should be able to pick up an inhibitor and dragon jinx just dropping a little bit of head bobs there but great play there by ADP gaming they're really going to be able to pick up a lot off of this hopefully at least they should have maybe gone for the dragon or the baron picked up one of those they didn't quite have the waves to push out that tower as much as they would have wanted nar to tank it they don't quite have the shields so they're going to go for the dragon now uh they're a little low but they should be able to tank it out just because it's nautilus he's gonna have the shield that's oriana they do have more shields there uh they're gonna get this and not a lot of hope there for on point to be able to take this one away from them yeah, I think they're more likely going to be able to quickly rush Baron. I don't know if they have the itemization for it, though, is the problem. Very nice fight, and it's going to be very scary if they try and threaten a Baron. Spider Phenom is huge. 5-1-5 and five on that Gnar. Just picked up a triple kill. Has to be sitting on a ton of gold here. Only so far with that Black Cleaver Giant spell. And I must say, Law is Law has landed some very clutch Oriana alts. Hasn't caught less than about two or three people in each of those alties, really pulling them in. Jinx firing off that Super Mega Death Rocket. However, on point does get that one mid turret, getting themselves a little bit of gold, but still down 7.7k gold. Good pick up there on the backside of that. I mean, they're really doing the best they can with what they have right now. Picking up that tower, just kind of trying to open up the map a little bit so they can go in and put some deep vision, which they have. If you look what that Brom's doing, that's a lot of vision in that top side of ADP's jungle. Just lots of wards coming out there. Uh, as they're pinging out somewhere down in this bot lane, hoping to maybe get a red buff steal, get some own deep wards of their own. Uh, Egglocity going to be here clearing out some vision around the Baron. So that's something they definitely have their sights on, as Jinx is going to get this red buff. Same with Kogma. So they're really depending on these carries to uh, do exactly what their name says. Uh, the mid lane is being pushed out here quite hard from uh, ADP Gaming, but it looks like they're just really, really going for the Baron bait. Yeah, both top laners with the tp gonna have to try and use it to their both their advantages and are going to be able to put a lot of pressure bottom but that's going to be a big problem on point has a decision are they going to commit to this baron or are they going to give up a free turret with Nar, you should be able to take a lot of damage onto that turret. I'm very surprised he hasn't gone B, however. I know he is sitting on a ton of gold right now. Hasn't gone B since that triple kill. It looks like Maokai going to make his way down there. Also does have TP available. But Jinx has that Phantom Danner, has, has that IE. Is going to be putting down a ton of crit damage. No one yet has built the Zeke's Heartbringer. I'm kind of sad. I feel like it would be very very utilized in this team comp but i don't think they need it at this point as they have a ton of damage coming out from all their sources yeah with the zeke's heartbringer that definitely would help enable this kogma a little bit more but we got a team fight coming in here as the maokai goes in 
Paranoia coming out onto the Jinx. She's not going to be able to peel that off, but she's going to back off as the Nautilus is coming on the backside for the flank. Huge shockwave! Five-man shockwave! Nautilus coming in, going to pick up that Kogma as they're going to go in on the... Oh, wow. That was some huge engage from the team. They're going to pick up the turret, the ace, and they're going to keep going there onto the inhibitor. Maybe even pick up the Baron after that point, but that was huge from them. That, that shockwave was amazing. Yeah, I cannot believe the amount of Wombo Combo coming out there from ADP Gaming. So good. It was just... They engage onto the Gnar, maybe not the wisest choice, and then they Nocturne Paranoia is onto the Orianna. They just let Jinx sit there and hammer away. The Shockwave comes in, pulling three or four of them in, and then they just start crushing them. This is just insane. ADP putting down a ton of damage, and this is exactly my point from earlier. I'm going to hammer this home. The Protect the AD Carry comp does not work unless you've got the damage. You look, Nocturne, so far behind, only has the warrior enchantment vamp scepter longsword he opted to go for that sight stone try and give his team some more vision but now lotus bump is a little too far behind to deal that damage relying so much on kogma to do the rest that sight stone it just seems a little too little too late in terms of this he needs a little bit more damage so if he's going to get on that jinx he's going to actually be able to do something to her rather than just get peeled off right away uh they're clearing out the baron here going to get some uh some vision down just in order to hopefully spot out if adp is going to go in for that as well as uh hopefully be able to steal and deny it because that might seal their fate there as they do have that open inhib on the bot though uh TP's still up for Nar, so he might even end up going down there and split push, but he's still on the top side of the map right now, so not exactly. Probably just going to be slow paced, wait for everyone to kind of get that farm going, get the waves pushed out in their favor, as well as Meganar just went there, so not looking to probably pick a fight quite yet. Uh, just going to be picking up the buffs right now. Yeah, ADP just needs to get their waves pushing in their favor. They have that bottom inhibitor, get the mid waves pushing, get the top waves pushing, and they don't even have to commit to the Baron. They could easily bait. They've done very well at this game, keeping vision control on top side, on bot side. They should be able to come in here as a team, start sweeping some of those wards, and as you look, they have a huge wave going in bottom. If On Point wants to play around at Baron, they have potential of losing their Nexus turrets. If they go send someone back, ADP will probably look to engage. They're kind of in a lose-lose situation right now, and being hesitant is not going to work for them. We do see Maokai trying to go beat, but the Braum ulti's in. We're going to have to see Tom Kench getting the slow... The Nard jumps in, gets the three-man ulti on top of the Orianna ult. That's a triple kill for the Orianna. Another kill picked up by the Jinx. We're going to have to see if Walrus Sunder can escape this team. He's slowly getting away as the minions push in bottom. He's just trying to distract them, bring them in here to try and get them to go longer. Not going to help out. I think that might be the game. They're playing that Wombo combo so well. The Gnar flashing in, getting the all followed up by the Orianna, and then just followed in with everything else that they have packed into those kits. It's just doing a ton of AoE damage, just a ton of CC. There's just not a lot that On Point can do to counter that, as they try and go for a last-ditch effort here, but they're going to finish off the game. Wow, there was a lot of good alts in that game. That was, uh, that was pretty insane. I honestly don't think you could pick a solid MVP. That team just played very well together. Spider, Phenom, and Lol is Lol, always on point. Nar alt, Oriana alt, and Gamer Dakota on that Jinx just started putting down that damage, cleaning up. S really great play by ADP Gaming there. Unfortunately, on point, going with the Protect the AD Carry comp, falling behind a bit, and getting punished for it. I think we're going to take a quick break here, guys, before we get into our game two. So stick around, and we'll be right back. Stop. 